Aloha mai kako. My name is Ali Andrews and you're here with us today to hear from three amazing community advocates about energy justice in Hawaii. The title of this show today is Energy Justice Taking Root or Takes Root or something along those lines. Justice Takes Root. We added an extra S in there. Um, uh, and we're, we're going to be hearing from uh, Todd Yamashita, who is the president of Ho'ahu Energy Cooperative Molokai. He's a fourth generation Molokai resident and a father of two. Uh, we'll also be hearing from Dr. Tavita Ka'ili, originally from Nuku Alofa, um, with ancestral ties to Tonga, Samoa, Fiji, and Rotuma, um, and is currently Dean and Professor of Cultural Anthropology, Language, and Performing Arts at Brigham, Brigham Young University, and longtime resident of Kahuku and community advocate, as well as Auntie Kapua Keli'ikoa Kamai, who is a community leader and, uh, in YNI and advisor to the YNI Valley Homestead Association Board. Uh, so I'm going to pass it over to them uh, to do a quick intro, um, and then we'll, we'll dive into sort of a casual talk story. Um, if anybody is listening uh, live right now and has a question, please uh, drop that in uh, to the chat or the website, um, and we will be sure um, uh, to share it with our awesome panelists. So Todd. First, give us a little background. What brings you to the energy justice conversation? Sure. So uh, it was definitely my family. My father was president of Molokai Electric back in the day. And so, you know, I was brought up with this idea of uh, hometown energy, uh, um, uh, ed you know, something that was owned by the community, um, something that served the community and uh, employed a lot of people. And, you know, I, I, I I remember back on my grandfather and um, the people who knew him and, you know, for him, it, it was, uh, he wasn't the electricity man. He was known as, as a community man. And um, we have a whole different thing. We have a whole different thing today. You know, it's, uh, we have the HEI who owns the utility here on Molokai. And um, it's, it's vastly, um, it's, it, it, it doesn't quite work that way anymore. And um, you, you mentioned my two children, and uh, I see a future for them uh, that's a lot like um, that of my grandfather's. And I, I hope that um, in all of the work that, that we can do here on Molokai and elsewhere, um, it, it can be in the spirit of community building. So that's, that's what brings me here today. Thank you for the space. I'm on mute. Thank you for joining us, Todd. Um, Auntie Kapua, can you share um, a little bit about uh, your background and what brings you to the energy justice conversation? Long time uh, resident of Wai'anae Valley Homestead, more of a community advocate than a community leader. Um, those things that I think are good for our community, I'll advocate for those that I think is not so good. Um, I'm definitely going to make my position known and actually find others that have like minds to see what we can do about it because there's too much things that people want to put into YNI that they don't want in their own backyard. And so YNI definitely needs justice, not only on the side of um, environment, but also in social welfare, economic. So there's many areas that YNI needs to be uplifted. Um, also been resident of Wai'anae Valley Homestead, Lessie, for the last almost 30 years. I have two beautiful daughters myself. Um, they're grown, no grandchildren yet, but uh, looking forward to leaving them a better place to live for our Mo'opuna as well. Mahalo. Mahalo, Auntie, and I love those generational uh, um, parallels between you and Todd. Uh, Tavita, can you round us out with your intro and what brings you to the energy justice conversation? Yeah, thank you, Ali, for the question and for the invitation to participate in this panel and uh, grateful to be here with Todd and um, Kapua. Um, I come at this from a cultural justice point of view as a um, 
my, my training is cultural anthropology. So I'm an advocate for cultural preservation, revitalization and so forth. And, um, you know, I have also a background in social work. So a, a lot of the work that I've been working on has been on social justice. Um, and, and over the years, the two seem to intersect where um, energy justice and social justice came in, uh, together. And I started to advocate for, you know, when I saw that sometimes uh, the, the energy industry was also um, destroying some of the cultures, uh, the beautiful culture here in Hawaii, but also in um, other places. And so I, I feel as a, an, an obligation and a you know, responsibility and, and a kuleana to, um, you know, to advocate for uh, making sure that cultural site, uh, cultural practices um, are, are preserved and conserved uh, in, in those particular areas. And especially with um, indigenous people and their rights to their land and so forth. Um, you know, as a person from Tonga who have come here to Hawaii, I've spent many years uh, advocating for Hawaiian issues. And um, so, you know, the energy justice um, area that I have been focusing and working on it is that, is that uh, particular advocacy to make sure that the voices of uh, indigenous people are, are valued and that they are heard and, and so forth. And, um, you know, I teach courses uh, as a professor that uh, also advocate for, for this particular area. And, um, and I live in Kahuku, where we have um, 20 turbines. We carry 40% of the wind energy of, of Oahu. And so um, my professional life and my personal life sort of all intersect in where I live. And um, perhaps later, maybe a little bit later, I will talk about some of the advocacy work that we have done here to, to get our voices um, heard. Uh, but that's, the, that's my, my specific area is advocating for indigenous people and their, and their culture. So thank you. Mahalo to Vita. Um, amazing to hear that background. Um, and I think what you said about making sure that local voices, that indigenous voices are heard in energy is a big part of energy justice. And I, I hope that that's something that we can chat about today. I think it shows up in a, a bunch of different uh, parts of our landscape, both projects that that do not uh, listen to local values or do not match local values. And then on the other end of the spectrum are projects that are, are built up purely by local voices and, and built from the ground up community led. Um, and I, I love the, the spectrum of voices that the three of you are bringing to the conversation, each kind of participating in different parts of that, whether uh, you're partial way down the, the road for community led community owned energy, which would be Todd, or just starting the conversation around community led energy, which uh, hoping Auntie Kapua can tell us a little bit about and then uh, Tevita um, with uh, hearing about the wind turbines in Kahuku and what it looks like to be thinking about a fresh project that did not match community values and shifting over. So Todd, can you tell us a little bit about, start, start um, um, us with the story of Moloka'i uh, history of extractive project proposals and, and how that grew into Ho'ahu. Sure, thank you. Um... You know, it's interesting because um, uh, our, I guess our, our genesis story um, starts off similar to um, uh, Tevita's and, and Kahuku's. Uh, uh, more than a decade ago now, uh, they had somebody had this really uh, great idea to build more than 50 of the world's uh, largest windmills. It was proposed that they would build these here on Molokai and that they would transport the energy uh, with a undersea cable over to Oahu. And, uh, you, you know, you can imagine how that was received here on Molokai. Um, but, you know, it, it, the conversation was important because this is more than just don't build this in my backyard. Um, you know, this is a concept of, oh my gosh, you know, this, this appetite for energy, if it is so voracious that you have to go beyond your boundaries, you know, outside of your ahupua'a, um, and into your neighbor's backyard, not even to ask, but to say, this is what we need and we're gonna take it. You know, obviously um, for us and the values that we, we try to live by on Molokai, 
um, you know, that struck us the wrong way. And so it created this, um, it created a movement. And through that movement over the years, we've um, slowly educated ourselves about our energy environment and what's at play here. And if you think about, um, you know, we have the highest uh, electricity rates here on Molokai and, and we use some of the, the least amount of electricity for anybody. Um, so if you, if you think about that, and if you think about $2 million bonuses um, from the utility CEO, if you think about the fact that this is a publicly traded um, company, um, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a hard, it's, it's a hard truth to swallow. Um, you know, the fact that this basic necessity is, is, um, is, is, is kind of um, being profited off the backs of our, our kupuna. Um, and, and, and so that's, that's where the passion comes from. Um, and it's more than just that, um, you know, for us, survival is everything. And so we don't have the same kind of eco economy as other places. And so when your utility bill is a huge portion of your income, um, you know, it, it, it's everything you can do just to make it to the next month. And so this is more than, uh, you know, just fixing, uh, you know, something that's broken. It, it's, it's, it's trying to um, build equity on behalf of our community. And so fast forward, you know, we, we, we've, we've heard of these new energy projects that are coming out and um, it's called community solar or community-based renewable energy. And, um, you know, so basically uh, the utility said, hey, there's a, a project that can benefit your community and, um, and you can choose potentially for it to benefit whoever you want, low to moderate income, uh, our Hawaiian homesteaders here, uh, which, which make up a, a, a good portion of our island. Um, and so that, that set us into action. You know, this group of people that have been meeting over the years, uh, just this year, we unified and created a cooperative and it's a consumer cooperative. And we, we created a consumer cooperative because we believe that, you know, if, if, if we are taking control of our energy destiny and we're using something like the sun that shines on all of us, um, it, it, it is not right to, to profit off of that. That's something that, you know, we need to, to uh, take to empower other people. And so that's, um, that's precisely uh, what we've done and um, in the spirit of, of, of bringing equity to our community, uh, we, we hope to succeed. Amazing. It's just an amazing transition uh, to be a witness to. Um, Auntie Kapua, can you tell us a little bit about where uh, you and some of your neighbors and uh, like-minded community members are thinking about in, in just starting that conversation? What has that been like so far? Um, what are you finding uh, powerful about that conversation, about thinking about community-led energy? What, what led you guys here? And yeah, I'll stop there. That's a lot of questions. Okay, so I was just um, saying about how I totally agree with Todd, you know, about capacity and overwhelming and then having to depend upon the next, the next guy for it. In this case, it's when Oahu had wanted to uh, cable out to Lanai for energy. And, you know, I was like, okay, that just means that Oahu has too many people or else we need to take care of our own needs. And if we can't take care of our own needs, we are exceeding our capability, our capacity. So, you know, to that extent, I think each community, each mokupuni, each island needs to take care of yourself and not depend upon the other guy. And I heard what you said, Todd, you know, about helping the next guy. That's true. But when, you know, Oahu is looking to overwhelm another area, another island, to meet its needs, that means that Oahu needs to look inside, look at ourselves. And so that's where uh, Y and I, you know, we're very grateful to get in contact with a group of energy conscientious folks uh, that far exceeds the three of us that you see here. Oh, I'm sorry, four, including you, Allie, the four of us. But from um, conversations like that, and learning about community-based renewable energy and how that is something that could be done in YNI because YNI has, I think to this date, we still have the largest uh, solar farm out here helping everyone 
but it doesn't benefit our community to help everyone as much as we'd like to. We'd like everyone to help yourselves. You know, you need the energy, put it up in your area. You need to take care of your trash, take care of it in your area. You know, so it's a community that takes care of your community, not putting it all in one area because it's at the end of the road. It's where you have your native peoples and part of your lowest income or wherever we may be, because this also pertains to Kahuku area as well. You know, I'm trying to put all of our needs on the next community, whether it be energy or Opala. You know, so it's community taking care of itself. And so we're fortunate to be in discussions with other folks and bringing it to our board and our community. So we just started this discussion about having our own community solar farm that can benefit our community as well as others on this island. So we're just glad for sky's the limit. You know, it's just a, a matter of the capacity that we have in our community to take care of ourselves. Mahalo. Mahalo, Auntie Kapua. I think um, uh, just as you mentioned, I'm going to transition over. Um, I think the the echoing there of of projects um, uh, being placed uh, in in burdening uh, other communities disproportionately. Tavita, can you tell us a little bit about how uh, your advocacy in Kahuku and thinking about this uh, wind farm project and how it doesn't match community values? How are you? Uh, where are you guys at in that advocacy and how are you thinking about um, uh, what community-led energy could look like? Yeah, um, you know, originally we had 12 uh, wind turbines. They're about 400 feet, 400 plus feet. The new ones that we have are 560 plus. Um, you know, these are industrial, um, massive, uh, turbines. Um, all of the energy, as far as we know, uh, do not go to our local community, but are um, taken, extracted from our community and taken to um, Honolulu to power many of the hotels and, and so forth. Um, so, you know, from, from the beginning, we've always asked the question, how does this benefit our community? We are completely surrounded by these um, massive we, we call them the monster turbines um because they they not only they're massive but their footprint as far as clearing so much of our aina in order to build one of these um you know we had you know some of some of our uh, our trees our forests were clear just to build one and then also its impact on our wildlife um the opepea the uh hawaiian hori bats and then many of the other native uh, hawaiian uh, culturally significant. This is where I came in because these were culturally significant. The Opepe is culturally significant because it shows up in the Hawaiian uh, Kumulipo and the Hawaiian creation story and many of the other birds, which to me, these, this was a, a form of, um, you know, a, a, a form of ethnocide, a killing of, a, of the culture through the, the industrial uh, turbines. And uh, so many of our advocacy was to say, hey, we, we don't want this. Um, you know, we've already have 12. We've we think we've carried our, you know, the, the, the number for, the, you know, for Hawaii, you know, perhaps it should be in another community. But many of us were also saying that, you know, the, the turbines just didn't fit here. Um, you know, we, we were all for renewable energy, rooftop solar. We were for that because we think that's wonderful. It doesn't take up some of our land. Our, our ag lands or any of our other land and, and so forth. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we really wanted to do was to get consent. You know, uh, oftentimes the conversation is about consultation. We have consulted with this community and to, to us, it felt like it was just going through the motion or saying, yo, we came and we talked to you and told you this is what we're, but there was no option for us to say yes or no. It was like, um, should we, uh, 
make the turbine this tall or make it short? Should we move it a few more feet? Yeah. So, so that was the conversation. It wasn't like, no, we do not want. And so um, for, for us, that was part of our concern that we've never been given a uh, consultation. So so now where we're at now is that we're just fighting, you know, these uh, corporations. Uh, the latest one is AES, uh, big energy uh, corporation that is, you know, multinational. And uh, we, we, we are basically uh, saying, you know, there's got to be a better way to do this where our local communities are involved in this decision and also, you know, have a saying of what to do with, with this energy. Uh, here in Kahuku, we have really good wind and we also have really good sun. So we're sort of kind of blessed in both of them. Um, it's almost also a kind of a curse for us because other uh, corporation outside wants to extract this uh, to use for for other things and i just want to say we're not against uh, renewable energy green renewable energy we're for it we believe in climate change we just want to do it in a way that's responsible and porno take into account the you know voice of indigenous local communities uh in, in the process of uh creating uh these uh you know these energy projects and so uh we we're, we've we've started having some conversations uh, similar to what they're doing in, in Molokai, but we're kind of looking at Todd and and then their work there as sort of kind of the model for us as we move forward in this process. So, yeah, that's amazing, Tavita. Mahalo for sharing, and I just also want to acknowledge all three of you the the level of effort, time, energy, passion that goes into all forms of advocacy, whether advocating against projects that don't fit local culture, that don't respect local values, and, and then building up projects that do, like equally so taxing on, on time and energy. So um, thank you so much for the work you do. Uh, Todd, I want to I wanna ask you to reflect on hearing uh, Tavita and Auntie Kapua share a little bit about um, uh, how they, where they are in the process and maybe Ho'ahu being a little farther down that line. Um, what are some reflections on some of the obstacles that you guys have gone through uh, forming a co-op? What are some of the, the resources that were helpful in, in getting over some of those obstacles? Sure, thank you. Um... You know, I, I, I think Molokai is a little bit different, so our obstacles have, have been a little bit different and, and um, some of our challenges differently different as well. Um, you know, I, I, before I go forward, I, I want to acknowledge that Molokai is very different and special because of the very, very hard work that uh, our kupuna did before us. Uh, they really helped keep this place intact. And we're lucky that uh, where our community is, is close enough to be relatively united. Um, and, and there are also many, many people not in this room that are actively at, my, at all of our sides working together um, to, to, to make all of this go. And I, I just want to really acknowledge them uh, in the thousands of hours that have, have got us to, to where we are. But to answer your question, you know, I, um, we, we know what it's like not to have the bandwidth. Um, we know what it's like to have to, where all, all, it's all you can do just to push back against something that is not right for your community. And Molokai has really been lucky um, in, in the past decade, it's been relatively controversial free here. And, and, you know, instead of just kind of taking a breath, we've, we've really used that time and filled that time with being proactive. And it has not been easy for us to get to this point where we are. It's taken a lot of hard work. And what we've done is we've surrounded ourselves with any energy professionals, uh, pro bono lawyers, um, leaders who have come out of the woodwork um, to, to root for the underdog. And we're not, um, we're not gonna be selfish about this amazing support that we got. Um, I, I'm here today to, to, to pledge to everyone here um, that everything that it is that we are doing is available to every other community out there. And, and in fact, uh, you know, I, I know um, Pavita and, and Tikopua because we, we've been meeting uh, here and there. Um, there is a movement, uh, energy justice movement that is, is going statewide. And it's talking about these really hard um, things that we're talking about trying, trying to figure out for ourselves. 
And uh, it's, it's our pledge from Molokai um, uh, to do whatever it is that we can to contribute to that movement um, in any capacity. Thank you. Oh, Todd. Um, we have just a, a couple minutes left uh, today together. Uh, Tavita, can I ask you for um, what are some of your takeaways and maybe even asks? Uh, as Todd just said, uh, we've got a lot of resources out there. Uh, is there anything that we on the call or the audience could help support the Kahuku community in, in, in pursuing their advocacy? Um, yeah, we, you know, one of the things we've always, uh, I mean, we're, we're grateful because we've received so much uh, support from many different communities. And I want to acknowledge, you know, uh, Waianae, Nanakuli, you know, all of the communities, Native Hawaiians community uh, came in, in full force to, to support us doing our, our stance. Um, you know, uh, I was arrested along with uh, 200 others. Uh, during the whole uh, one month that we we were uh, protesting or protecting, I'd like, and we you know we refer to ourselves as as Kiai, uh, you know, really inspired by Mauna Kea as as protectors of of culture and and Aina and so forth. So you know, one of the things that we've always um, so we're grateful for all that support and and um, you know would like to just ask people to continue just to support us in in our um, most of our fight now is is in the court and we're in you know several different court fights that we are involved in um, in trying to to right the wrong that you know or the injustice has happened to to us. But moving forward, we are also sort of just trying to consider do some. Uh, you know, thinking about, you know, how do we work as far as making this uh, more community led, community based, and so forth. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for the partnerships that, and the meetings that we have, um, you know, I met meeting with the uh, Ho'ahu and, and others in this, and if other community members out there are doing similar things, you know, help us. Thank you. Mahalo, Tavita. Amazing ask. Andi Kapua, we've got, I think we only have 30 seconds left. Do you have any uh, takeaways or next steps you want to share? And you're on mute, just for a warning. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to thank the energy hui that, again, is more than us, that allowed us to come into this discussion and to even realize that there are opportunities for our community to actually benefit from the energy that we can create. And I encourage other communities to consider that likewise, and we welcome everyone's assistance. Mahalo. Mahalo, Auntie Kapua. Mahalo, Todd and Tavita. I think we're right about at time, or that's what they're telling me anyways. Um, this was an awesome kickoff to what will be a bi-weekly once every two weeks, um, a community conversation around energy justice. So we'll have more folks from our hui come join us and, and we'll tackle new topics. Uh, anybody listening has any specific questions they wanna ask, uh, send us an email, um, but you'll, you'll see us in two weeks, energy justice in Hawaii. Thanks guys.